What's up, guys? My Brown here. Boom. Lines.com. It is the week eight edition of the Monster Pod, a little bit different than we have done. It's a solo pod for one time and one time only. We'll have people here with me moving forward. But hey, listen, we're not going to skip a week. We'll let you know what's going on here. Certainly the bets that are already in my account. So let's go ahead, get rocking and rolling here and start off with the Arizona Cardinals and the Miami Dolphins. Four and a half is the line in favor of the Dolphins. 46, 46 and a half is the total. Of course, the big news here is Tua's coming back. Um, if you look at the injury report, he's listed as questionable technically because he's still an IR, but he's going to play. Uh, the other thing that's interesting, though, is, is Tyree Kill did pop up on the injury report. So if your handicap is based off of not necessarily Tua being back, but off of just the injury report and um, and what his weapons all look like, then you might want to take that into consideration. Um Look, we got an Arizona defense that is is really poor. Uh, it doesn't really matter what facet of the game we're talking about when we're talking about this Arizona defense. It is just a team that is is bad all around. And so we have to decide, is that bad that this team brings to the table bad enough to where you want to come in and back this Dolphins team that has looked absolutely putrid without Tua out there on the field? And, and you know, that's the question. And, I'm you know, past defense is 30th overall in the NFL, and we're talking about this this Arizona Cardinals team that if Tua's fine, which again this wasn't a physical injury, right? It was it was a concussion. Um, if Tua's fine, then they should be able to slice and dice this Arizona secondary. I mean, we were talking a team dead last in pass defense success rate. If you look, I mean, DVOA twenty ninth in DVOA against the pass. I mean, this is everything that Miami could dream of for Tua to come back is against this defense, right? They don't get any pressure either. So, I mean, it's 29th in the NFL. We're talking about a team that is is towards the bottom, almost dead last when it comes to pressure rate. So, in theory, you know, this should be a Dolphins win. This should be a Dolphins win and probably a Dolphins cover. It's a Dolphins defense that has actually kind of under the radar because maybe you you weren't paying attention. I know it's easy to not pay attention whenever they're doing what they were doing on offense without Tua out there, but his defense is actually like upper half in just about every category. It's actually upper third in just about every category out there. So, I mean, I have to just assume that, that Tua's fine and that Tua's going to be good to go and that Tua's going to be Tua. And so with that, I mean, I I think we have to back the Dolphins here in this game. And I think it's something that is, uh, it's going to be a tough watch, right? It's going to be a tough hang. There's no doubt about that. I mean, we are we are legitimately talking about a dude that last time we saw him was out there, you know, full fencing, full everything. I mean, it is something that, you know, we're – it's going to be tough. The bet's going to be in the account, but it's going to be a tough watch because literally every single time that he drops back and does anything, we're going to be wondering – you know, is this the last time? And I get it. And if you don't want to bet on this game because of that, I actually completely understand that. I, I really do. Like, I, I, it's going to be tough for me to look at for sure. Um, that being said, if Tyreek plays, I like Tyreek props. Um, and if he doesn't play, obviously Waddle props are just, you know, golden here in this one. And uh, we just we just assume that this team's going to look like it did in the past. So that's where we're going here in this one. Um, HN props are a little bit too low, I think, as well, if you want to look at an alternate way to, uh, to go about this. Baltimore Ravens and the Cleveland Browns. This is currently anywhere from 8 to 9 out there in the market right now in favor of the Ravens on the road at the Browns. 44.5 is our total. Of course, we know this is going to Jameis. And... Um, I think Jameis brings a little bit of intrigue, actually, to this game. Not only just for the fact that we get Deshaun Watson out of there. No matter what you think of him as, you know, a human being or player or anything like that, you never like to see anyone get hurt. So, you know, I will preface all of this, I'm saying, with the fact that, you know, certainly don't want the dude to, like, never play football again. But I will will say that... uh, you know he was he was awful by every single metric, every single measure. He was absolutely horrible uh, this year. So I think it can only be better for the Browns. I think this is obviously going to be 
you know, America's teaser leg this week, getting the Ravens down to under a field goal. I think that is uh, not only a good play, I think that's the play to make here in this one. I don't know if I want to lay the full eight and a half because I do think that Jameis brings a little bit of variance to this game. He certainly is going to push it down the field a little bit more. Now, does that equal completions against this Ravens secondary, which, by the way, kind of under the radar is not very good. Um, So they actually can be had in the air, right? I mean, you're talking about a team that if you kind of look, I mean, it is DVOA says they're a bottom half pass defense. EPA says they're a bottom five or six pass defense. They're probably somewhere in the middle of that. And so, I mean, I think that there's a decent chance that there could be some some success here with with Cleveland with Jameis under center. That said, um, no way they win this game outright, in my opinion, without some sort of major injury uh, for, for Baltimore or whatever. So uh, this is a teaser leg all day long. We're going to take that eight, eight and a half and uh, – Put that in the account. We'll talk about who we pair that up with a little bit later. Green Bay Packers and the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is three and a half to four in favor of the Packers on the road over the Jags. 49, 49 and a half is our total. This is a, uh, I put in three and a half on the Packers and I actually have started to come around on the Packers a little bit. I know this is, if you didn't listen to any of the preseason content that we did, I was kind of like, hey, man, we need to pump the brakes on this Packers team. We need to make sure that Jordan Love is actually good. We have one year of sample size, and then, you know, we're just assuming all these things. But uh, that being said, I think there's enough here to show that he's pretty good and that this team is pretty good. He's got to quit turning over the ball. You know, he turns the ball over way too much. But this Jags team, um, look, Awful, awful, awful against the pass. And we have a a Green Bay team that not only is really good in the pass game, but also is uh, at full strength here in this one. So I think that they kind of, I think they light up this Jacksonville team. Jags, you know, coming back. And I I don't weigh too heavily into this. I mean, again, it's a, whatever, six and a half hour flight. But I mean, coming back off of living in, in England for two weeks and all the things. There's a lot of stuff going against the Jags team. Coach, you know, lame duck coach, the whole nine yards. But more than anything, when it comes down to it, it's just that, you know, Jordan Love should be able to to go kind of wild on this uh on this secondary. So really do like the the Packers to put it on the Jags here. I actually played the three and a half and then I played a couple of alts as well. I played like I played six, six and a half, and then I even played like a you know, some weird ones. Seven and a half, nine and a half, things like that for this game. So really do like the uh, the Packers here a decent bit. Indianapolis Colts on the road at the Houston Texans. This is five in favor of the Texans. 45, 45 and a half is our total. Um, you know, you know what we got here. We got a uh, Texas team without Nico Collins, a team that is on the offensive side far, far less potent um without uh without nico collins out there now that being said they are back home um they are getting to play against anthony richardson so all of that kind of comes into the fold here in this one because i mean listen anthony richardson guys we've got enough sample size now to know he ain't it right now like he, he might be down the line he might figure some stuff out the more the more reps he gets in the nfl but like he ain't it right now. And so uh I, I'm pretty uh I'm pretty uh, pretty firm in saying that the Colts are a bad team with Anthony Richardson at quarterback. I mean the defense is bad as it is anyway. And I think this is one of those deals where uh where we're looking at a at a Colts team that is probably, you know, if you look at the power rankings, you know, bottom bottom ten with Anthony Richardson at quarterback. It's just a it's just kind of how this team's gonna operate, you know, while he's out there. So that being said, this number's about right, in my opinion. I think this is more of a prop game. If you want to come in, this is a Colts team, like I said, really, really bad on the defensive side of things. So maybe you want to head into the uh, you know, I should rephrase this. Really bad against the pass. Not terrible 
uh, against the run. So I think we're going to get a, uh, I think we're going to pretty good performance through the air here. Kind of a bounce back deal for, I don't know why this Texans teams look so mediocre uh, this year, specifically on the offensive side of the ball, but Tank Dell, maybe some Tank Dell props, maybe some things like that. That's how I would be looking at this. I'm not going to lay the the number here until I kind of see it from this Texans team, but I do think that there are some props that you can exploit here in this one. Would certainly be looking at uh, some Tank Dell stuff here in this one. Uh, Tennessee Titans and the Detroit Lions. This is all the way out to 11 and a half now in favor of the Lions at home over the Titans. 45 is the prevailing total, though there is one 44 and a half out there. A couple of 44 and a halves, I should say, out there in the market. We all know Lions, number two team in my power ratings, only behind Kansas City. Titans ship DeAndre Hopkins out of town, so a bad team is worse. Uh, that's at 11 and a half. You just can't. I mean, I can't do it. W- would it shock you if the Lions kind of played with their food and won this thing by 10? It would not. Would it also shock you if the Lions come out and just throttle the Titans, like, you know, by 20? That wouldn't shock you either, you know? And so when there's that like that, that type of range of outcomes, uh, not something I typically love. And for what it's worth, the Titans defense has actually not been terrible this year. And the Titans defense actually is pretty good against the run, which we know the, the Lions do very, very well. So I think there is a world that exists that this one is kind of sloppy for a little while. I think there's a world that exists that maybe the Lions don't really get it going against the, against this defense with the, the run game. And then so it just it looks a little off um, for a bit. So not not a not a game I'm willing to play out there at eleven and a half. I I think weirdly, which I'm not going to put in the account because I'm never betting on Will Levis maybe ever again as long as I live. It looks like he's going to be back out there, by the way. Uh, but I think I'd have to take the dog if I was going to play it. But can't uh, can't do it. I'm heavily invested in Lions as it is anyway. You guys already know this, so uh, so we're not too uh, we're not too worried about about what's going on. Uh, here in this one, but boy, Titans really, 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 really bad. Atlanta Falcons and the Tampa Bay Bucks. Excuse me. Um, Atlanta Falcons and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is just under a field goal. It is the Falcons at two and a half in favor on the road. And um, 46 is the prevailing total here in this one. Y'all know I'm, I'm, I got a lot of money on the Falcons. Um, to win this division, I wish I was like, I wish I felt better about it. I wish I felt better. I should feel better about this game when you look at this injury report and that you know the Bucks aren't going to have their top two receivers out there as Chris Godwin is gone for the season and Mike Evans is gone for three or four weeks and 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 this Falcons team can't be more than a than a two and a half point favorite in this game given those circumstances, given that's what we're looking at. But that's what the Falcons have been so far this year. I mean, like, what in the hell is going on with this team? Why don't they look better? That is, I mean, seriously, why don't they look better? I, I just, I just can't, I just don't get it. I don't know why they are a middling offense. It's not like they're bad, but they're middling. And why are they middling? I think Kirk Cousins has lost a little bit. And I didn't think he was. I thought there was still enough left in the tank for this team to easily win this division, but that's really not the case here um, right now. That being said, all I did in this one was play a prop without the receivers out there. I mean, what in the world is, you know, what in the world is this Bucks team going to do? And what is Baker Mayfield going to do? I mean, I think this is something where you try to decide, okay, who becomes the beneficiary of these receivers being out. And like, is it another receiver? Is it a running back? Or could it in fact be the tight end? And I kind of think it's going to be the tight end. I th- kind of think Kate Otten is going to end up getting a ton of targets in this game. Now, does that mean it's going to be efficient? Does that mean it's going to be efficiency from the Bucks? I don't know because I don't know how quality those targets are going to be. But when you're talking about what Baker has to work with, and we kind of see that he likes... Otten as it is anyway 
and that was before he was at without his two best receivers. So uh, let's get Otten props in the account, receptions, yards, things like that. Maybe a couple of alts as well to uh, to really emphasize what we think is going to happen here in this game. But man, total crapshoot! I can't believe I'm sitting here having to uh, say I can't back the Falcons at under three against the Bucks that don't have Evans and Godwin. But that's where that's where we live in right now with the way that this Falcons team has been playing. New York Jets on the road at the New England Patriots. This is a seven in favor of the Jets on the road. 41 to 41 and a half is the total. This was the other uh, leg of the, you know, kind of teaser thing that I was talking about. Now, listen, I didn't play the full six point teaser. You've listened to us talk about this here on the podcast this year. And this is something I've been employing a whole lot more. And I think you should too, which is, manipulating the line to get through the numbers that we're looking to get through without having to pay the price that they are charging now for the full teasers, right? So that's not that's where we're where we're at really with this. And so what I mean by that is let's like, you know, sure, we need to take the we need the 6 points or five and a half points, depending if you get it, 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 if there's an eight still available out there, to take the Ravens down through the seven, the six, and the and the three. But you don't need that here, obviously, in this one with the seven. So, right, like, so we're just only going to take four and a half points from the book instead. And then that way we're not paying the 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 big price, right, that, uh, that it costs for teasers these days. So it's the bring the Ravens down to under three and then also just bring the jets down to under three and and that's all we're doing we're not bringing it all the way down to one we're just bringing it down to two and a half and with that we don't have to pay near as much and actually i can just do it real quick and just let you know what that pricing comes out to so that we're and, and we are looking at an eight actually in that ravens game currently as i record this over at DraftKings, and so that's something that you can um if you shop around you'll be able to to do so we'll just uh we'll take them down like i said to two and a half put that in the account and then head back out to the this game and take the jets down just click on the game lines tab by the way and when you click on the game lines tab every book gives you um different ways to to bet these these lines or whatever and so we take the jets to two and a half and yeah so we're only paying uh 120 there on that one, um, as opposed to you know most books, one twenty five, one, uh, one thirty even at uh, some of the books, not right now for a teaser. Um, so just you know again, look at that stuff. Make sure that that's uh, just that you're getting the best pricing, and make sure that if the if the teaser costs more, then sometimes you can just manipulate the line and get the same result with what you're uh, what you're looking for. So let's uh, that, no really need to explain this. Patriots are. What are, what are they? Second worst team, worst team, third worst team in the NFL. Uh, Drake May brings a little bit to the table, but this is, you know, the Jets, as much as I'm not high on them, this is where they, you know, they get it. They get a win. Devontae Adams finally gets a good, gets a good game under his belt. Maybe this Jets team starts to look a little bit better, but yeah, I mean, this is just, you know, part of a teaser leg, part of an alt line parlay. That's basically what we're doing here. Philadelphia Eagles. And the Cincinnati Bengals. This is two and a half to three in favor of Cincinnati at home over the Eagles. 48 is our total. There are a couple of 47 and a half if you are looking to play the over in this game. Now, what do we have with the Eagles? And, and that is just the craziest question that we have to ask this because, I mean, this was, a, this was one of those teams that coming into the season – we weren't asking these questions. It was the same quarterback. It was the same receiving core. It was the same offensive line. It was the same coaching staff. The only thing was is it should have been a hell of a lot better because you hadn't Saquon Barkley to the mix, you know? But instead, it just hasn't been that way with this team. And so what you're actually getting here is a Cincinnati team that, whose offense has been really good this year. Now the problem, of course, lies in the fact that they're Defense can't do anything. But this offense, this offense homes. This offense can move. This offense can do stuff. And we're talking about a Philadelphia defense that is in the bottom half of the NFL. 
in most of the categories out there. And so if we're going to get into a firefight here, and this is just going to be, I mean, look, one of the bigger totals of the week, right, up at 48. If we're going to get in a firefight here, and this is just going to be like back and forth and all that, then give me Cincinnati. Cincinnati's going to score more often in a back and forth game where we're just scoring left and right. They're going to score more often than Philadelphia is. They are a more efficient offense. They are a better offense than is what is currently constructed in Philadelphia right now. Why that is, I don't know. But that's just what we're dealing with. And that's what we have that's how we have to play this. So as wild as that is, and as wild as that sounds, we have to back Cincinnati here in this one. I mean, this is a team that as long as they can keep Joe Burrow upright, which this offensive line has played much, much, much better the last month of the season. It's a Philadelphia team that, for whatever reason, doesn't get any pressure. They don't blitz a ton. Joe Burrow should be able to have a day here through the air. Don't expect him to do much on the on the ground, but I, I, I think he has a lot of success here through the air. Uh, give me Cincinnati here at home under a field goal. Buffalo Bills on the road at the Seattle Seahawks. This is a field goal. It is 46, 46 and a half. That field goal, of course, in favor of the Bills. Um, Bills, Amari Cooper comes in last week. They insert him right into the lineup, and he he makes an impact. He actually does, um, gets a few catches, scores a touchdown, all the different things like that. I, uh, I'm not sure what to make of this Seattle team without DK Metcalf out there. By the way, he is not going to play in this game. I don't know what this offense looks like. Does that mean more targets for Jackson Smith and Jigba? Does that mean more targets for Tyler Lockett? Does that mean do they go to a tight end, you know, like uh, throw into Ken Walker out of the backfield? Like, uh, you know, I don't know exactly what that translates to here in this. So it's a very weird game for me, odd game for me. I think the line is about right in all this. But given the unknown for Seattle, it's just – I kind of wanted to, I think, maybe play the dog here at home at a field goal, certainly, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. DK Metcalf just kind of brings an element to this offense that isn't replicated through, you know, ad- additional targets to to Tyler Lockett and to Jackson Smith and Jigba. They're just different types of players. Tyler Lockett, obviously, a different type of player kind of on the latter end of his career here, so... Probably a contest play maybe on the Bills or something, but nothing I'm going to put in the account. New Orleans Saints on the road at the Los Angeles Chargers. If you're wondering about the sad uh, state of the Saints, they are a full touchdown dog to the Chargers. Yeah, that Chargers team. 40 and a half to 41 is the total in this one. I know there's going to be some people who want to use this as a teaser leg. Fine, I guess. Um, If you want to go there, I'm not going to go there uh this is the like put this game on a rocket and fire it into the sun game of the week right i mean this is just this is it i guess if you wanted to i guess if you wanted to go in and and you know you really really wanted to play something here Maybe, maybe you you maybe you playing under uh, even in a super low total game like this. I I don't really know. I don't know what New Orleans can do on offense with Spencer Rattler under center, and then certainly you know one of those deals where the Chargers are just this is horrible. Right? I mean this this offense is so gross. How you have Justin Herbert and do what you're doing on offense is just so wild to me. Um, that said, this defense is really good. Defense has been stepping up, been playing a ton. So, you know, I don't know. Do the Chargers get more than 20 points in this game? And and do the Saints score more than 10? You know, I mean, uh, you're get, I, I don't I don't know. I don't know if it happens. So, I think at 41 and a half that's out there, I've had to put in something on this game. You're talking about a Saints team that literally since Rattler take over, it's just nothing to it. Um, so... Super low total under, the gross under, the one that you don't want to put on the TV and have to watch and sweat the bet, but I think that's the way to go. Chicago Bears and the Washington Commanders. The Bears are three-point favorites on the road over the Commanders. 43, 43 43.5 is our total. 
This one is, look, Jaden Daniels practiced on Friday, and I guess they're trying to say there is a chance he could play. I can't imagine them try to, in the position that they're in, because this isn't like a must-win game for them. They've positioned themselves pretty good to where I don't think you run him out there when you don't have to. I, but again, this is just my personal opinion. Uh, I, I mean, there's there's no the beat reporters were saying he was going to be definitely out, and then next thing you know, here he is practicing, and them saying that he he's questionable. So, um, impossible game to handicap, not knowing who's going to be playing quarterback for Washington. What we do know is when Jaden Daniels is under center, I mean, this is one of your this is one of your most efficient offenses, better offenses in the entire NFL. You know, and that's crazy to say, right? Crazy to think. But that's the case, and that's where we're at right now with Washington. So, I mean, if you get if you get word, if you get a feeling that, that Daniels is going to play, I mean, I don't know if you want to back him necessarily here um, at the at the three. I mean, I, that's the only play for me would be to take the three points for the Commanders if, if Daniels is going to play. But Maybe it's more looking at at an at an over, right? I mean, this Washington defense is because the offense has been the defense has been as bad, and then with that you get a you get a Bears defense that has actually been pretty good this year. But you're going up against you know a really good offense, so you know there's going to be some there's going to be some points in that. So maybe that's the angle here. But again, really really tough game to handicap when you don't know who's going to be playing quarterback for the uh, for the Commanders. Carolina Panthers at the Denver Broncos, and I'm not misspeaking when I say this. It is 10 and a half, 11 in favor of Denver at home over the Panthers. 41 is our total. Yeah, uh, this was going to be a big spread anyway, but now because we're getting Bryce Young back under center for the Panthers, this thing is at 11. There's just no way. I, I mean... You can't you you can't get to eleven with the Broncos. You just can't do it. I mean, this team has looked like garbage for the vast majority of most of the games. I mean, if you look at the overall box scores, it doesn't really paint a picture of how bad Denver's been, how bad Bo Nix has actually been for the majority of it. I and mean, he 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 rallies together like a quarter and a half a good play, which makes the stats look a little bit more appealing, but he's not good and hasn't been good for the vast majority of games. That said, neither is Bryce Young, right? Uh, grotesque game here. Um, but you're giving me 11 points in a 41 total, right? I mean, that's just the only way to do it. It's the only way to play it as the Panthers. You just hold your nose and just hope that the Broncos can't score. Because the defense is obviously really, really good for the Broncos. We know that. Like, you just kind of hold your nose and hope that they can't do, you know, out of the ordinary what they've been doing all year long. I mean, they have not just not, not scored any points, right? I mean, the pass offense is atrocious. But uh, the defense for Carolina has been atrocious on every facet. So, I mean, I, if there ever was a defense, if there ever was a team for the Broncos to cover 11 points, it would be this Carolina team. But too much in a game with a total this low with an offense in, that Denver has that just you know, can't do anything. So hold your nose, take the points. Kansas City Chiefs on the road at the Las Vegas Raiders. This is nine and a half to 10 in favor of the Chiefs. As they head to Vegas, 41 and a half is our total. The Chiefs do trade for DeAndre Hopkins. Andy Reid, when asked if he was going to play, said, why not? <laughs> you know, so, okay. Now, what does that actually mean? How much? How many plays is he going to actually know? How many routes is he going to know? Uh, all these things like that. I mean, you know, this your guess is as good as mine, but he's at least going to be out there for some of the snaps. If that changes your opinion on this, uh, I don't imagine they're going to let this get into teaser territory. So I don't think this is going to be able to be a teaser leg for you with the Chiefs. I think it's either you take the Gardner Minshew points with the Raiders. And move on. Again, taking double digits, there is there is you know a ten out, a couple of tens out there. Or you just pass on the game, right? Like this Chiefs offense, will it look exponentially better with Dondre Hopkins after a few days? I don't think so, right? I mean, maybe it will. But I don't think so. So you have to kind of just imagine this offense is going to be what we've seen so far, which is just bad. Offense has not been good. Defense has been lights out. That's why the Kansas City Chiefs 
are number one in most people's power ratings because they have Mahomes, they have Andy Reid, and they have a defense that has been unbelievably good so far this year. So maybe the Raiders with Minshew can figure something out. I don't know. I don't know how you get to the window with either one of these tickets and feel good about it. Like, I just don't, I don't know what you're doing really there. Maybe it's just like you play Kareem Hunt props, right? Maybe that's the deal. It's the, it's the Chiefs don't really have to pass a ton to win the game. So Kareem Hunt just, you know, has 20 carries in this game, goes for 85 and a touchdown, something like that. So maybe you tell a story with Kareem Hunt just doing whatever he wants to do against a Raiders team that maybe has quit. Not real sure if there's anything left uh, with this team, obviously, with what's going on. So we'll see how that all plays out. But I think it would just be Kareem Hunt props for me there. And that one, Dallas Cowboys on the road at the San Francisco 49ers. This is four in favor of the 49ers at home over the Cowboys. 47, 47 and a half is our total. Man, the uh, 49ers, brutal. Brandon Ayuk out for the season. So Debo Samuel is uh, Debo Samuel is not going to play. Doesn't look like, doesn't look like Juwan Jennings is going to play either. So, yeah, I mean, that's why you're only looking at this number where it is right now. What do you do with this 49ers team? What do they look like? What, do you have any idea how this how this looks in you know from an offensive perspective? I think the only thing that you can really do is try and guess which uh, which receiver benefits, and you know maybe it's Ricky Pearsall. I mean, there's no props put up right now because in theory, you know, guys are questionable and things like that. I mean. Doesn't look like they're going to have anybody out there. Doesn't look like these guys are going to go. And so, if that's the case, I mean, maybe, maybe when they post Pearsall props, that's the way to go here. And this one, it, Brock Purdy is going to have to throw to someone. He is going to have to throw the ball to someone. I can assure you, he is not going. They are not going to just run for 300 yards in this game. And so, I think we have to look at a at a real possibility that Pearsall. <laughs> You know, it's crazy to think a guy that got shot two months ago is the healthiest guy on the roster at the receiver position, but I think we have to at least consider that that's a reality. So, when Pearsall props pop up, let's uh, let's take a look at those, and maybe that's what we're going to go at here against a Dallas defense that is, it shouldn't be as bad as it is, but it is, but it is bad. Um, it is a it is a crazy crazy bad run defense too like for whatever reason uh, you can just run forever on this Dallas team so uh if the Pearsall props are low enough let's go there and if not then you know let's let's load up on some San Francisco rushing props here uh they need this game pretty badly so they're gonna do whatever it takes to win if the if the run game is working then you know they're gonna they could have they could have 35 40 rush attempts in this game so that's where we kind of are. That is the Sunday night game. Uh, of course, we'll have a separate Monday night video for the Giants and the Steelers. But and of course, like I said, we'll be back to to normal next week with uh, with everybody back here on the uh, on the pod. Multiple people, not just me, not just my voice, not just my opinions. We'll get everyone's thoughts and opinions here uh, as we head into week number nine. Remember, guys, uh, always shop around. Go over to thelines dot com. Look at click the odds tab. Make sure that you have outs at different books that you're getting the best number available. Shop around on prices for these teasers slash alt-line parlays and things. Make sure you're getting the best price on those as well. Upper right-hand corner of the lines is the Discord. So get in there and chat with everybody about everything. Everything we do, absolutely free. Please hit that subscribe button. And good luck on all your Week 8 bets. <laughs>